Back on the Young Turks, Jake Uber, and now joining us in studio, Carly Mill. She is the author of Sexography, One Woman's Journey from Ignorance to Bliss. Mm, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> Carly, thanks for coming in studio. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, no problem. First, uh, I'm not familiar with the word sexography. Uh, what are we talking about there? Well, it's a completely made up word, but... <laughs> ah, that's why I'm not familiar with it. I see. Okay. I, basically, when I was coming up with, with the concept for the book, it was sort of wrapped around the idea of a sexual autobiography, and I thought, oh, why don't I just squish those two words together? Oh, that's what I did in my human sexuality class. I've ta I talked about this a couple of weeks ago on the show. Mm -hmm. at, at, when I was in school, I took a human sexuality class in undergrad, and my final paper was my sexography. Really? You know? Yeah. A plus, by the way. What did you write about it? Uh, well, there wasn't much to write because I really I hadn't gotten laid until then. <laughs> but I wrote a sad, bitter story about you know about my sex life until then, and uh, I think the professor was moved to tears, and he was like, "I gave me a pity A." I was going to say, if you got an A, it must have been good. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> anyway, by the way, I want before we go on, I want to show you the book, okay? Because look at this cherry. Can you see this cherry? <laughs> I mean, that is a that's a provocative uh, cover for a book. I like it a lot. And then you got, you know, uh, Carly in the back, so that's good too. So that's fun. Anyway, this will be in the Young Turks Library. You should check that out. Um, all right, so let's talk about it. So, what is your sexography? Where do we start? Oh goodness. <laughs> uh, wait, okay, you know what? Let's start at the beginning. When's the yeah. first time you kiss a boy? Oh boy, first time I kissed a boy. You know, I don't know if playing doctor counts when you're like too young to really know what that's all about. You know, I'm so pissed because nobody ever played doctor with me. I didn't know we were supposed to play doctor. Really? No, I never played spin the bottle. I never played doctor. I didn't know that that's what was supposed to happen. Oh, you missed out on so much. Right. The first time I ever kissed a girl was when I was 15. Really? Maybe even 16. Was it earth shattering though? No, but I was thrilled to death because it was the first time I was doing it. I was like, booyah, finally, <laughs> finally. Uh, so when's the first time you really make out with a guy? Official, official first kissing a boy was fifth grade. And then wow. full on making out, I think probably around seventh grade, I was at a high school dance, or a junior high school dance. Okay, now I, I know you have a story, uh, uh, your early, ex some of your early experiences were not positive with sex. Right. Uh, now, did that happen first? Uh, yes. It did. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about that. Uh, well, when I was younger, um, I guess I was around seven, uh, it started happening in second grade. My parents split up when I was five. Oh, wow. That early? Yes. And uh, my mother took up with a boyfriend who uh, started sexually abusing me. And um, he was abusing, he was assaulting her as well. And when she split from him, I was sent to live with my father. And uh, later on, my father, see, I hastened to use the term sexually abused me. I mean, he was definitely inappropriate with me. Mm -hmm. um, and on the heels of what I had gone through with my mother's boyfriend, it was certainly hard for me to deal with. But um, it wasn't as pronounced as mm -hmm. it was with my mother's ex ex now ex-boyfriend. Okay. So that's your introduction to sex in, in, in some ways. So it's actually rather remarkable that you recover from that and wind up having a positive experiences with sex. You know, uh, when did all that end? Um, the abuse part, the childhood abuse part ended around the time I was 13. I was taken away from my dad mm -hmm. when I was 13 and um, moved to a different city. And I was just sort of Nobody wanted to talk about it. Nobody wanted to deal with it. And so me looking towards my elders going, okay, I guess this is how I deal with it, I just sort of shoved it down and went, okay, well, nor normal teenage girls like boys, and they want to kiss boys, and they want to, you know, hang out with boys. So I just did that and thought, this makes me normal. Uh, that's interesting. And did you, but did you have mixed feelings? I've always wondered about that because I haven't, you know, I haven't talked to a lot of, uh, I don't know what the victims, I guess, of, of sexual abuse when they were younger. Mm -hmm. um, you, you must have conflicted, conflicted feelings internally, though, when you were making out with the guys and stuff. When we start, uh, tell us about that. I mean, what, what was going through your head? Oh, there's actually a story I wrote about in the book about um, this boyfriend that I had when I was around 14, and he was always pushing me to go further, further, and there was something in me that was just like. 
I don't want to. I don't want to kiss you. I don't want to touch you. But I, there was always this running dialogue going on in my head where one was one side was going, no, no, no. And the other side was going, come on, it'll be fine. You know, what are you worried about? So I, I almost felt like I was going crazy. <laughs> That's <laughs> interesting. It's like, when you have those normal urges, but then they're preceded by this trauma that happened ahead of time and you haven't reconciled the two, it's sort of it's sort of hard to figure out how to move forward. So, Carly, and we're talking to Carly Mills. She's the, uh, Mill, uh, the author of Sexography. She's also written for Glamour, Variety, Maxim Stuff, uh, Whole Lifetimes, AOL. She's been on Entertainment Weekly, Cosmopolitan, et cetera, et cetera, E! Entertainment Channel. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Carly, so when uh, do you reconcile that? And when does it start to, like, I don't know if, if, it, if it ever all truly completely happens. Uh, you tell me. Uh, as to getting beyond it, you know, if, for lack of a uh, better word. I think it's a process, and uh -huh. I don't think there's ever one particular, well, I mean, it's sort of, for me, it was a series of one particular moments that made me go, okay, let's work this through. But ultimately, um, it didn't hit me that this was something that I hadn't let go of and that I really had to work through until I was about 26. Oh, wow, that yeah. late. Okay. Yeah, because I had been cramming it down and, you know, not really dealing with it for so long. And I was married at the time, and I remember one time my uh, my now ex-husband, but at the time my husband, went to just give me sort of an affectionate pat on the butt, and I punched him. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And that kind of made me go, you know, maybe something's wrong here, and i got to deal with it, so... And and at 26, were you? Did you begin to tackle the issue, or did you think you think you resolved it in your mind? No, I began to tackle it definitely uh -huh. because there was just something in me that like it was such a knee jerk reaction to him touching me that I know I was going totally on instinct as opposed to, you know, oh this is my husband, he loves me, I love him. Um, so once that happened, I immediately started searching for a therapist and um, started working with her and started journaling and doing all sorts of numerous things to start working it through. And I don't think I ever really started to find my peace with it until probably around 29 or so. Hmm, that's interesting. And Carly, so you know, we fast forward a little bit, wound up writing uh, reviews of porn movies. Okay, so <laughs> obviously she reconciled it at some point, right? When did you start writing the porn reviews? I actually started working in the adult industry, that would have been in uh, 2001. Okay, so you're, at pa you know, is that past 29? No, I that was that was before 29. And it's interesting because I really think that my time in the ad adult industry is one of those, you know, series of one moments that made me go, okay, I really have to work this through. That's interesting. So why, why do you get into the adult industry? That's because you're writing and you have a couple of successful websites at that point, you, mm -hmm. you've had them. Uh, what made you decide to go in that direction? Well, when I moved to L.A., um, you know, the job market was just kind of dead. And I actually had the opportunity to decide between whether I wanted to work with Adult Video News, which was the magazine that I worked with, mm -hmm. wound up working with, or if I wanted to go work for E! and write for their website. And I thought about it, and it's funny because adult entertainment was, I was kind of surrounded by it growing up. You know, I ran across my dad's porns and porn magazines and, you know, little boys would shred the magazines in the playground and everything and I'd see them laying all over the place and it was something that sort of, with my background, fascinated me because I thought, you know, I hate being touched, I hate being naked in front of somebody else, what makes these women so comfortable with it? How can they do that? And so there was sort of this interest and fascination in figuring out the psychology behind why they did that. And then on the other end of it, I thought, well, there's not a lot of women who are writing about this from the inside, so maybe there's something I can learn. I I'm curious, what paid better, E or Adult Video News? <laughs> probably E. <laughs> oh, probably E. Okay, because yeah. E is notoriously low-paying in in uh, in L.A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just was wondering if there was a way of enticing you. Uh, and you do, you review like 30 movies, what a week, a month? A month minimum. Okay, so that's like one movie a day you had to watch. Yes. Uh huh. And did you like it, or what? I mean, or did you uh, not like it? What was your reaction to watching all of that porn? I got really burnt out. I mean, uh -huh. in in the beginning, it was fascinating me, to me because the fetishes you learn about are just so 
completely nothing you would ever expect humanity to be interested in. That's interesting. You, you have, off the top of your head, you have one or two or three that you think are like, whoa, I can't believe people actually make videotapes of this fetish. Um, there was one that I thought was somewhat bizarre. I mean, I kind of get, okay, bondage, fine. I didn't find it very interesting that they'd just tie a girl up and she'd struggle for 20 minutes and that was the movie, you know what I mean? But there was one where there was this uh, overweight woman rubbing herself with balloons. <laughs> and that apparently was all someone needed. See, of all the different fetishes I've seen in my lifetime, okay, and I have a, a history with porn as well, mm -hmm. uh, not really in a professional sense, but um, in an amateur kind of sense. Uh, but anyway, oh, see, now that, that begs explanation. <laughs> okay, no, no, just as, a, as an amateur viewer. Ah, okay. uh, now, but in all that time, I've never seen uh, uh, these overweight women rubbing balloons on themselves. Yes. The one that I saw that it blew my mind, uh, I saw a clip of it maybe on HBO or something, people dressing up in like chicken costumes. Oh, furries. Furries, what is yeah. that? I don't know. <laughs> I actually, I never, I, and I'm kind of surprised, in the amount of time that I was reviewing movies for them, and it, I think I was there for about seven months before I said I just can't do this anymore, but I never saw a movie with furries, ever. Oh, that's interesting. And did, did, did you, was the fast forward button the most uh, used button in in the remote? Oh yeah, okay. definitely. Because you know, after a while, all the scenes just swim together. I mean, it's the same thing over and over again, just did, a different location. Did that desensitize you to sex at all? Absolutely, one hundred percent. And that was part of the reason why I quit. Because not only, you know, it, it sort of it brought up abuse issues in me again. Oh that I, that I sort of wasn't again, wasn't dealing with, and I think that's ultimately what led to the incident with my husband that led me to going into therapy finally. But um, on top of that, it was just like, I didn't want to be around anybody. I was just, I was watching so much sex, I just couldn't stand it anymore. Not often you run into a woman who says, I was just watching so much sex <laughs> that it got to be a bit much, you know. It did. <laughs> so, are you at the point now where, you know, towards the you know, as you write the book, Sexography, mm -hmm. and you know, your subtitle here is One Woman's Journey from Ignorance to Bliss. Are you at that bliss point? I mean, are you loving uh, sex to no end at this point, or is it not quite that blissful? I don't know. I, you know, I, I think the definition of the bliss that I find is, I don't know necessarily that it's sexually based. I mean, at this point, I've been single and celibate for two years. And I think the bliss that, that I've found is a comfort in my own skin and, you know, an end to the incessant chattering in my brain. And a lot of the issues that sort of came up for me over the years as a result of the abuses and assaults that I had been through. So that to me is bliss. If I wind up finding somebody to share that with, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, just having the comfort to be myself is more than I could ever ask for. All right, Carly, I'm going to ask you one last off-the-wall question, just for fun. Uh, as a single person going out on dates, how many dates does a guy have to go through before you think it's appropriate to have sex with him? Oh, wow. <laughs> I think if I knew that answer, I wouldn't still be single. <laughs> you think so? I don't know. I don't know. I think it depends on the circumstance. I mean, I, you know, I... I don't know that I'm the best person to answer that because I've made the mistake of jumping in too quickly mm -hmm. in the past. Um, and I think that now I'm of a mindset that I would much rather take my time and get to know somebody before I just, you know, give in to the physical urge. So I actually really liked it. It's so funny because I, I actually liked that part in 40-Year-Old um, Virgin where she says, well, why don't we go like a whole month without sex and we'll just hang out and get to know each other? And he's like, great. I like that idea. <laughs> I, okay, all right, so we're not unreasonable. We're not talking about six months. We're not talking about a nine months. We're talking about, like, hey, let's take a month out. Hey, I'm human. Like, I got needs, too. I'm not going to wait that long. All right, now we're having a conversation. <laughs> all right, uh, Carly Mellon is the author. The book is Sexography. It's got an awesome cover. Check it out at the Young Turks Library, where you could buy it, of course, and we got a link up to it on our website, theyoungturks.com, as well. Carly, thanks so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. Thank you.